everyone, and welcome to a brand new season of Skypothesis Vanilla Skyrim Character Builds. We are dedicated to breathing new life into Skyrim through unique character builds and engaging roleplay. While mods provide fun new experiences to video games, we have found extreme satisfaction in making builds that are completely possible in the vanilla game, and made this channel as a library for all of our best builds. We take inspiration from all corners of fantasy including books, video games, TV shows, and movies to bring to life unique characters for a memorable Skyrim experience. Today we are excited to showcase the Bulwark of the Bog. This deadly defensive Argonian tank seeks vengeance upon all who have wronged his people. He has taken it upon himself to be the defender of the Black Marsh, and is on an endless quest for the power to do so. He uses his incredible defense and deadly poisons to outlast his opponents. He will not stop until his plagues and poisons are the most feared force in all of Tamriel. The Bulwark of the Bog was born into slavery in Morrowind. Many Dunmer still rely on slave labor to tend to their crops, and some are known to treat their Argonian slaves with extreme harshness. The dry ashland with frequent ashfalls from the Red Mountain was a stark contrast to the lush, wet bogs found in the Black Marsh. While the young Bulwark never knew these lands for himself, he grew up hearing stories of Argonia's beauty from fellow slaves, including his aging parents. The Hist watches us over there, his father would say. The shadows hide us, and even the very plants are our allies. His parents, having grown old, were unable to work effectively and were frequently beaten by Dunmer taskmasters. Day after day and year after year, the small family of slaves grew increasingly bitter and enraged with their situation. One night, the Bulwark was led into the ash-filled night by his dying father. They hid in a mushroom grove away from the night watch, and the Bulwark watched as his father plucked a leaf of scathecraw from the ground. Though we are far from our homeland, the plants here can be our allies too, he said. He told the young Bulwark that he had spent years developing an alchemical concoction that would cause great sickness, killing all but the Argonian slaves. As he was dying, he would pass the task on to his son. Protect our people, he said. Protect our home. The next day, after another beating at the hands of Dunmer taskmasters, his parents were killed. Fueled by anger and vengeance, the Bulwark spent his nights perfecting the alchemical concoction until he finally released it upon his masters. The plague spread fast and they were wiped out in days. The Bulwark of the Bog led his people to freedom in an exodus out of Morrowind and into the Black Marsh. He spent decades there living in a hut on the border of Black Marsh and Morrowind, perfecting his poisons and sneaking into Morrowind, slowly furthering his revenge by wiping out one small slave town at a time. His hate grew stronger with time, and he never forgave his captors for what they did to his people. He knew that he could only get his revenge by becoming more powerful himself. In search of knowledge and rarer and more potent alchemical ingredients, he left his hut and traveled across Tamriel, eventually winding up at the southern border of Skyrim. For the Bulwark of the Bog's roleplay, it is important to remember that his twisted desire for power is what fuels his antics in Skyrim. Though originally searching for ingredients for stronger concoctions, upon learning that he is dragonborn, he realizes that this frozen land could be the key to his ability to protect and avenge his homeland. He approaches combat by turtling up behind his shield and letting enemies come to him. The closer they get, the further entrenched in his poisons they become. He is the definition of a defensive character and can weather almost any offensive onslaught with ease. When playing as the Bulwark, you should always let your enemies come to you, advancing slowly if at all. When not in combat, he will spend as much time as possible underwater, using his Argonian water-breathing lungs to avoid combat and travel quickly through rivers. He is generally able to hold back his hatred for Dunmer when in populated areas, for obvious reasons, but if he ever runs into them in the wild, he will kill them without hesitation. He is a chaotic evil character, preferring to kill first and ask questions later. His only redeeming quality is his desire to free slaves and protect the Black Marsh from further harm. His twisted logic grants him the moral callousness to take a life without any shred of remorse. He sees himself as Argonia's hero and protector, avenging them by taking on the world. However, he creates more problems than he solves in his efforts and becomes a force of unintended consequence. By taking out villages in southern Morrowind, he worsened relations with civilized Dunmer and created avoidable tension and discord. His crusade is not sanctioned by the Hist, and his time as a slave has scraped away everything in his soul that isn't pure malice. 
With this in mind, you must roleplay that some of the quests he carries out in Skyrim are a means to an end. For example, he will destroy the dragons and pursue the main quest, but only to absorb their souls and gain their power. In terms of quest order, we chose to head immediately to Solstheim and pursue the Dragonborn DLC questline immediately after discovering he is Dragonborn. The main reason is so that we can obtain Mirak's staff and sword before we start any other questline. We really wanted to enjoy the vine-spewing combat for as long as possible in this playthrough. Upon being attacked by cultists, he finds that there is a powerful being who wants him dead. He will have no rivals in his newfound dragonborn world and immediately travels to Solstheim to take down Mirak. After completing the dragonborn questline and obtaining Mirak's gear, you are ready to pursue any other questline in the game. We chose to first complete the College of Winterholt, followed by the Dark Brotherhood, Civil War, siding with the Stormcloaks to weaken the Empire and thereby their potential influence on the Black Marsh, and finally the main quest. You can fit Dawnguard anywhere you want. We chose to join the Dawnguard, as the Bulwark of the Bog views vampires as a threat not only to Skyrim but his homeland as well. They must be stopped. Relevant side quests include any that deal with plants, alchemy, and death, such as the only cure, a return to your roots, the blessings of nature, the white file, the cursed tribe, Boethia's calling, and the house of horrors. Argonian-themed quests include extracting an Argonian, unfathomable depths, and miscellaneous quests found in the Argonian assemblage in Windhelm. Almost every Argonian on the docks has a short quest for you. Moving on to the Bulwark of the Bog's weapons and armor. We wanted him to look the part of a creature straight out of the swamps, and there is no better armor set for that than the Falmer armor. This armor looks pretty awful on any race except for Argonian, so we are glad that the Bulwark of the Bog can put this unique set to good use. It can be found on a table in the Mazincheleft Depths from level 1, so head there as soon as you can to start getting kitted out. On his head, he will wear an apprentice hood for the magic buff, and because it looks really mysterious and voodoo-like in conjunction with the wicked Falmer armor. For his main weapons, he will switch between Mirak's staff and Mirak's sword. Again, we roleplay that all of the writhing green tentacles from the Dragonborn DLC are in fact vines that the Bulwark of the Bog can control. Once again, because they are so integral to his roleplay, we suggest completing the quest at the Summit of Apocrypha before any other questlines. Moving on to the Bulwark of the Bog's Spells and Shouts. He will use Soul Trap regularly in combat, so he can easily recharge Mirak's sword and staff. We recommend obtaining the Black Star for any Soul Trapping character. The Bulwark of the Bog will also make use of the Poison Rune, a unique restoration spell available for purchase in Tel Mithrin. This is a very underused spell, mostly because it's pretty useless for most builds. It complements the Bulwark of the Bog's tanky poison-themed playstyle perfectly though, so we are super stoked to finally use it in a build. Years back, we wondered why Poison Rune was a restoration spell, but came to find out that this is because the Restoration School of Magic deals with the manipulation of life and living forces. With this in mind, we are able to extend that into the vines that the Bulwark is able to control and roleplay it all as enhanced restoration magic. For shouts, he will make frequent use of Drain Vitality. This shout feels so much more useful when combined with other damage over time effects, and we like to roleplay it as a way to weaken an enemy and make them more susceptible to his poisons. Another useful shout is Soul Tear. Because we don't have a soul trapping weapon, he will need to resort to self-casting soul trap or using soul tear if the situation calls for more careful magicka management. The Bulwark of the Bog is a master of alchemy and as such will have a variety of potions and poisons on hand at all times. Stock up on generic magic resistance potions and damaging poisons but keep an eye out for rare ingredients to make a few special plague concoctions. The first is Dread Blight, which is a poison of fear made from Namira's Rot and Blue Dartwing. The Bulwark of the Bog uses this poison to send his enemies fleeing in terror when he gets swarmed. The second is Rooted Blight, which is a poison of paralysis and damage health made from Deathbell, Canis Root, and Impstool. And finally, Festering Blight, which is a poison of Ravage Health, Damage Health, and Weakness to Poison. This is made from Skeever Tail, Giant Lycan, and Deathbell. This poison stacks incredibly well as the Ravage and Damaging effects are compounded by the Weakness to Poison on each hit. Each strike will deal much more damage than the last, and drive the plague into his enemy like hammering a nail. 
Moving on to the bulwark of the bog's stats and perk spread. We chose to level him with a ratio of 1 magicka, 4 health, and 1 stamina. Like a true bulwark, he will be using the Lord Stone for increased tankiness, granting him 50 additional points of armor and 25% magic resistance. He is, of course, an Argonian, granting him the extra useful racial ability Hist Skin, along with a fitting 50% resistance to disease, water breathing, and a handy plus 5 boost to restoration. By the time we hit level 40, this is what our skill trees looked like. In block, we'll be perking the entire tree with the exception of quick reflexes. You can take this perk if you'd like, we just aren't the biggest fans of it. In one-handed, we will be taking all five in armsmen, followed by fighting stance and savage strike, keeping in mind that he is more of a defense-focused build than an offensive one. In restoration, we will be taking the novice through adept perks, followed by regeneration and respite. In enchanting, take two perks to get yourself up to soul squeezer, Mirak's Staff and Sword eat through souls, so it's helpful to squeeze out every last drop. In Alchemy, we will be taking all five in Alchemist, Physician, Poisoner, Concentrated Poison, Green Thumb, and Snake Blood. Finally, in Heavy Armor, take just three perks in Juggernaut. If you plan to play past level 40, you can always add more to Heavy Armor and One-Handed. Alright, it's time to move into the Bulwark of the Bog's special moves. This is our favorite section of each build video, where we showcase cool move combinations that make each character feel unique. First off, we have Toxic Territory. In this move, the Bulwark of the Bog lays a poison rune at his feet and surrounds himself with the tentacles from Mirak's staff that we roleplay as Grasping Vines. When an enemy finally gets in close, they will be met with a wall of vines and an explosion of poisonous gas. This will leave them in a severely weakened state where they will be easy to finish off. Next we have Scales of the Bulwark, which is an instant tank mode, defensive move performed by combining Hist Skin, Force Without Effort, the Lord Stone, and Bones of Earth. When combined with Toxic Territory, you become almost indestructible. Next up we have Withering Vines, performed by combining Rooted Blight with Mora's Agony. We roleplay that the Withering Vines reach up and hold your enemies down to the ground, keeping a firm hold on them while you continue your battle. Finally, we have Scourge of Periite, a combination of Dread Blight, the Shout Drain Vitality, and the Poison Rune. Upon entering your toxic territory, your enemy realizes his fate and flees for dear life, all while being slowly eaten away by your poison cloud. And with that, we are ready to wrap up our Season 4 opener. We hope you enjoyed this toxic tank and have an even better time playing as him. We're super excited for this upcoming season, and like always, we'll be posting a new build every Friday for the remainder of the season. We love reading your comments and hearing your ideas, thank you so much for your support. If you've enjoyed this build and like what we do, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to ring the bell so you can be notified when we post new builds. Thank you so much for helping us keep the magic of Skyrim alive, and we will see you next time, right here on Skypothesis. Thank you.